Hello guys, I'm TC and welcome back to my channel. Now, we all know modern golfers. We know the McElroys, the Woods, but many of us don't know about golfers from the past. And I think that's a shame because many golfers through history, we can learn a hell of a lot from them, from the way they played the game. I'm a traditionalist. I prefer golfers from back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s because they were all so different. I think guys today are a bit sort of robotic and they all look near enough the same. They all dress quite similarly. They all talk in a similar way. This is the start of a series. I'm not gonna do it too regularly because it avoids tears, but I think it's important to push into the spotlight some golfers who I think deserve more recognition than they get or have got. All five of these golfers I'm gonna be talking about today could all play some seriously good golf. I mean seriously good golf. They have multiple wins when you add them all together, hell of a lot of wins, but they were all very different characters, which I think we're lacking in today's game. Right, let's stop mucking about and let's go on with this list. Right, so at number five, we have Tommy Bolt. Now, Tommy Bolt was an American golfer. He was born in 1916 and he died at the age of 92 in 2008. Tommy Bolt didn't join the PGA Tour until he was in his 30s. Now, that's important to note because even though he joined late, he still went on to win 15 PGA Tour titles. 15! Voice break. He won the US Open in 1958 and he also played the Ryder Cup in 1955 and in 1957 when Great Britain and Ireland won at Lindrick. Tommy Bolt had a really free flowing swing like a lot of the guys did in the 50s. There was none of this locking and loading and putting loads of pressure on your back. It was just free and easy going from your right hand side to your left. Not too much thought. Unfortunately for Tommy, he really could play but his on-course antics came to the forefront. If you think that John Daly or Sergio Garcia gets passionate or irate on the golf course, neither of them could hold a can to Tommy Bolt. He got the nickname Terrible Tommy because of his on-course antics. He would throw clubs, he would snap clubs in half over his knee, which was really unusual for the time. If you think about it, back in the day, the traditionalists would, were looking on in horror at some of the stuff that Tommy was doing. And because of his behavior, the PGA brought in the rules to pro prohibit golfers from behaving in such a manner. He went on to say that a lot of these things that he did was to distract people from his game, to bring a bit of liveliness. But unfortunately, because of his behaviour, many have forgotten just how good a golfer he was. And he was a very good golfer. To win 15 times on the PGA Tour when you didn't join until you're in your 30s, that is some talent. Terrible Tommy, you really could play and you deserve the number five spot on this list. At number four, surprisingly, we've got another American. I'm not the biggest fan of most American golfers. I might do another video on that. But this guy, I think, deserves a big mention. And this guy was called Ed Fergal. Fergal was born in 1917 and he died in 1997 at the age of 79. Now, what's important to say about Ed is that when he was 12 years old, he had an accident. He fell off a set of parallel bars and he badly injured his left elbow. He had numerous surgeries on this elbow, but it never properly healed. So it became, his arm became 25 centimeters shorter than his right arm. Now, Many guys would look at that and think, well, your golf chances are over. Not Fred Fergal. He won 10 times on the PGA Tour. He won a US Open in 1954. He was well regarded for being a very consistent golfer. He would hit many fairways and he could putt quite well. But who's heard of Ed Fergal? No one. We, we, not, we don't really hear about him anymore at all. I mean, it was a long time ago. This We're talking back in the 50s. But this guy could really play. And to say that this guy had an affliction, had a disability, had a withered, badly withered left arm, and still won 10 times, he deserves way more credit than he ever got. 
and thoroughly deserves his spot at number four on this list. Now at number three, we have one of my favorite English golfers. This guy was fantastic, is fantastic. He can still play. This guy's 85 now and he is Neil Coles. Now, who's heard of Neil Coles? Very few people know of Neil Coles now. He won 50 times. 50. He played in eight Ryder Cup matches between 1961 and 77. The longevity of Neil Coles' career is probably the most important thing to say about him. He won his first tournament in 1956 and he won his last in 2002 at the age of 67 on the European Seniors Tour. That is unbelievable golf. Unbelievable longevity. But I think what's important to say is that we don't really know much about Neil Coles because he had a horrific fear of flying. He did get some credit in being given a member of the British Empire Award, but he really hasn't got anything near the credit that he deserves. And many of you guys won't have heard of him, but he sure as hell deserves the spot at number three on this list. Now at number two, we have one of my favorite swings in the whole of golf. Probably one of the most free and easy actions you will ever see, and that is from Mr. Julius Boros. This guy was a seriously good golfer. He won three majors. He won the PGA Championship in 1968 when he was 48 years old. 48 and he won a major. And who remembers? Very few people. That's unbelievable going. He won the US Open twice in 1952 and 1963 at the age of 43. He didn't turn professional until he was 29 and he still won 25 times. Now that is some going. And the ball just getting in the way of this beautiful looking nice and easy swing but what a golfer to win a major at 48 i mean we all know about jack nicholas in 1986 winning the masters at the age of 46 winning the pga championship at 48 and nobody's heard of him i think that's a tragedy he was born in 1920 and he died in 1994 at the age of 74 and at number one probably one of the most underrated golfers in history without doubt and that is the south african Mr. Bobby Locke. Bobby was born in 1917 and he died in 1987 at the age of 69. This guy didn't win one Open. He didn't win two Opens. He won four Open Championships in 1949, 1950, 1952 and 1957. He won 74 times in his career on all a range of tours, on the PJ Tour, on the South African Tour, on the Sunshine Tour. He coined probably one of the most famous phrases in golf. You drive for show, you put for dough. And in terms of putting ability, this guy was the master. He had probably the most bizarre technique. And I'm gonna show you now. Now, Bobby Locke would set up like this. You see, way to the right. He would set the ball on the toe of the putter, like this. And he would come in as such, and I've hit the camera. Probably the most bizarre putting star there's ever been in golf. And like that, that sort of striking, it, it would stop there. Similar to my sort of style, knock and stop. But he could really put very well. He had a massive hook as well that he had to cope with. Mmm, how familiar. He could really play. And people don't know enough about Bobby Locke. He is not given anything like enough credit for the golf he could play. And that's why I wanted to tell you a bit about the man. He's one of my favorite golfers, I think. Um, he's way before my, people always say this to me, why, why, why are you so bothered about people from before you were born? They're an alternative. They're, they're so different to the way the game is played now. There's so much of a focus on technique and, the, and your swing looking nice, a focus on using the core muscles. That doesn't work for me. The golf swing should be free and easy and it should be something you can repeat forever. All of these guys could do that. They had that sort of golf swing. Bobby Lott would play, played in the open years and for years and years and years. Max Faulkner, 
and Bobby Locke were paired together, two past champions. And Locke still had the same swing he did 25, 30 years ago. That's a testament to all of these guys. They could, pl they, th their game held up for years and years. I think that is far better than being a flash in the pan. So there we are. That's the video for today. I hope you found it quite interesting. Five golfers you may never have heard of. Some of you might have heard of them before. I hope you have. Well, now you do know a little bit about them. Go and have a look at them all. Go and check them out. There's quite a bit of footage on YouTube. Not so much of Ed Fergal or Tommy Bolt, but there's some stuff on Bobby Locke. There's quite a bit of stuff on Neil Coles. And there's a hell of a lot on Julius Boros. So I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe at the bottom. I've been TC. You've been you. And I'll see you all again soon.